What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving guys an overview of the exact processes I use uh, to create games from start to finish. I'll also be discussing the costs involved and also the teams that I use to help me create the best possible games um, for the App Store. So the first thing I'll do is I'll do a bit of research. I'll go on the App Store, see what games are doing well. I'll decide what genre I want to go to do, um, maybe a card game or a puzzle game. I will then go to my whiteboard. And for those of you who are game developers who do not have a whiteboard, I highly recommend that you get one. I mean, it's, it's really been a game changer for me, just so that you can see your thoughts on a whiteboard. You can easily, when you come up with something, draw it out, um, share it with your team members. Um, yeah, it's just been a really good thing uh, to invest in. So I'll drop some basic wireframes. Uh, I will sit down with my art team and we will go over some, some ideas, um, some themes for the game. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll come up with something great. Uh, they'll then go off and give me updates. And um, yeah, having an art team has really been revolutionary for me, um, especially um, because they share the same vision um, in my games and they also provide me some valuable feedback. I'm not the most artistically inclined person. So yeah, it's been a really, wonderful working with them and um, yeah it's it's the results have also shown in terms of engagement in my games also the retention which then uh, in turn positively affects re <coughs> revenue so yeah I'm really happy with them uh, artwork is uh, not that cheap uh, every month I spend around two and a half thousand dollars on artwork uh, it might sound like a lot, but it is quite labor in, um, inducive. So um, we have uh, uh, illustrators, we have UI artists, and also guys who do the animations. So yeah, I'm really happy with the job that they're doing. Uh, it's also really important to have kind of a cohesive theme across all your games so that players can easily identify games from your studio and um, yeah, so with with my games, I have um, some central characters that feature across all the games. Um, yeah, so, so like I said, I'm really happy with that. Uh, the next team member I have is my lead programmer. Okay, so he's responsible for basically the, the whole structure of the game, the game mechanics, bug fixes. Um, all the good stuff that uh, developers uh, do. And um, I have him on a monthly retainer of around $1,000 a month. Um, it's very important that the programmers do work well with the art team. So another tool that I found really useful is Slack. Um, it's not that expensive. You can add team members. It's just really easy to share. Um, things of the project um, and it's it's really good communication tool to help everyone be on the same page which is really important okay so <clears throat> yeah the next thing the next um, next part of the team that I have um, are the technical artists and if you don't know what the technical artists do basically they bridge the gap between the art team and the programmers. So they are like magicians. They will come in and polish the game. Um, before um, I had uh, technical artists, I there was always something missing from my games. It was it was like the the game mechanics worked well, the art looked good, but there was just that like something missing and what these technical artists do is they come in they provide special effects um, some animations um, also some sound effects music they just um, make the whole game flow much better and yeah like i said it gives it that polished look um, which really helps with uh, user engagement so yeah if if you don't have someone like that in your team, I highly recommend when you are able to 
afford them, yeah, they really add the cherry on top. So on the technical artists, I spend around $1,500 a month, and which brings the total monthly spend uh, on game development to around $5,000 a month. Okay, this might seem like a big chunk of change, uh, bearing in mind currently on the revenue side of things, my games do bring in anywhere from fifteen dollars to $20,000 a month. Uh, anyway, that is still quite a big chunk of change. Uh, don't let that number throw you off because I also started making games with, I think my budget, I remember my first games I was making for around 200 to $300. And those games were actually making money. So um, just by doing that over and over again, I was able to learn more things, uh, build up some more traction uh, to where I am now. Um, which I have a little bit more financial freedom when it comes to making games. So yeah, don't uh, be disheartened. Um, if you are just starting off with a small budget, you can make that work also. And I, I was there, so I fully understand where you are in that regard. So just don't give up, keep learning as you go along. Every time you release a game onto the App Store, that's a win. Uh, just simply because you learned so much from it and uh, you can apply that into your next games and that's how you slowly build traction and uh, in no time you will have a bit more financial freedom so the tools i use like i said i use slack i also use zoom um, all my my team i work with them remotely which means that they are in different countries um, than myself so the eventual goal for my studio is i would like to have an in-house team although having a remote team was quite beneficial during this whole pandemic. Um, so yeah, so that actually worked out quite well in my favor. In terms of marketing, once the game is ready, I will release it to a select group of players uh, just to see any feedback with regards to bugs, make sure everything's working well. And once that gets the green light, I know that it's bug free and it's ready to go then I will release a mass email. So I'm big on marketing, especially on the organic side of marketing. I, for the last couple of years, in, I've been cross promoting my games and in doing that, I've also been collecting players' email addresses. So I've got quite a big email list of players and once everything's good, I will release a mass email to them and that'll, That'll be the beginning of some traction for that game. It'll get some initial reviews, so some uh, decent search and downloads, and hopefully pick up some organic traction that way. I'll also tweak the ASO. Um, yeah, basically all the traffic I get is organically. I, however, I am still trying to work my way into paid user acquisition which is a science all on its own. So eventually when I'm able to, I would like to hire some UA specialists and help me on that side to really scale things up. So that's my plan in the near future. I hope you guys found some value in this video and please comment in the, please comment below what kind of processes you use to make your games. Also, um, maybe let me know if I'm doing something wrong. I'm also learning myself, so I'm really open to all you guys' feedback. And um, yeah, let's all grow together. Um, my goal for the future is to build a seven-figure studio. Um, so yeah, I'm well on my way to doing that, hopefully not in the not too long future. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please hit that uh, like button. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Um, yeah, and I will see you on the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.